Nice to see you today. Um, like I said yesterday on YouTube, um, this is my sermon called Let's Get Wild. I'll explain Let's Get Wild in a minute. Father, I, I thank you and praise you for what you've done today, God. You were just so good. And you were just so God. Despite all the all that's going on, God, I pray that you will just um, be with us especially today, God. For those who are worried, for those who are downtrodden, Lord, lift every head. I pray, Lord God, that today you will help um, people experience you in in a more than special way, God. Meet them at the point of their need, God, whether whether their need be financial, emotional, spiritual, physical, whatever the need may be. Just meet them at the point of their need, God. And for this sermon, God, speak to me, speak through me. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Okay, um, so this sermon title is called Let's Get Wild. Um, um, I was thinking of, um, uh, the song Wild Women, Women Do by Natalie Cole. It's on the Pretty Woman soundtrack. And I was, um, as I was thinking of this song for some strange reason, an acronym came, uh, to me, uh, about, um, for the world, word wild. Wisdom, um, intuition, love, and determination. And at first, I thought this book, this uh, sermon, would only be for women, but no, this sermon is for everybody, women and men. Um, and I began to think about um, the people in the Bible that had um, all of these things and what these things mean, what wisdom really means, what intuition really means, what um, love really means, and what determination really means. Um, so I'm going to go into a bit of that today. Um, so that's, that's my structure for today. So, so when I think of wisdom, uh, I think of not just knowledge or simply knowing something but understanding it and applying it like what I said last night on my YouTube post I said communication is not simply just talking it is understanding and, apl and applying what the person communicated to you and I went through the um, some of the application of communication. If you're interested in seeing that one, it will be posted right um, below this post. When I think of wisdom, I think of wisdom in all its facets. I think of um, intellectual wisdom, where, where, uh, um, which means 
uh, you're wise intellectually. I think of emotional wisdom. You're wise emotionally. I think of spiritual wisdom. You're wise um, spiritually. I think of financial wisdom. You're wise financially. I think of all these things. And all of us, I think, have a measure of wisdom, have a measure of um, what we know and how to apply it. But I think very few of us have all all the measures of, of wisdom. I think only one person in history, Solomon, had all the measures of wisdom. And you don't have to have all the measures of wisdom all the time. Um, a lot of people say, say, I'm not very smart or I'm not very wise, meaning that they, they feel that they don't know much, but in an area, they are wise. They may not be wise in the intellectual area, but when it comes to spiritual things or financial things, they're very wise. So never minimize your wisdom. And um, wisdom starts with God. So the first, the first, I think the first um, step to becoming wise is to becoming uh, is is no know, knowing God and knowing His wisdom and what He has to say, and then the first layer of His wisdom starts with His Word. You cannot know God without knowing His Word, and I'm not talking about necessarily the Bible, although that's a great place to start. Although that's a great layer, but don't stop with memorizing a bunch of scriptures. When I say knowing his word, I mean knowing how he speaks, knowing how he speaks to you, knowing what I call your, the rhythm of God in your life. And I've talked about this many times before. I I believe that God has a rhythm in everyone's life, how he speaks to you, whether it be through some people, he speaks predominantly through his written word, and some people, he speaks artistically uh, through music or movies or something like that, some people, he may be using something else. And that's the beginning of wisdom. Some people have a lot of uh, wisdom, but they don't have a lot of understanding. And, uh, and the difference between wisdom uh, and understanding is that um, wisdom is knowledge. It's just knowing something. Understanding is learning how to apply what you know to your life. So I'll say that again. Wisdom is not is knowledge. It's knowing something. And understanding is learning how to apply it to your life. Understanding is receiving it and receiving it to the point where you can get the application to your life. And a lot of people have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have a lot of understanding of how to apply it to, your, to their lives. And... Um, 
without with wisdom if you don't have understanding then it's a moot point like cause if you know things but you don't understand how to apply it to your life it's not going to serve you anything um Wisdom without understanding is moot, and an understanding without application is is moot. You need all three. You need wisdom, you need understanding, and you need application. And he's calling people in in this day and this time to be wise. And sometimes different areas of wisdom are required at different times. Sometimes you need spiritual wisdom. Sometimes you need emotional wisdom. Sometimes you need intellectual wisdom. Sometimes you need financial wisdom. Sometimes you need different kinds of wisdom for whatever situation you you're in and wisdom rarely comes by yourself wisdom usually comes with sharing with other people and and learning from other people that's why we go to school but the problem with school is we have a lot of knowledge but no idea to how to apply that knowledge half the things uh, we've all learned in high school we forget because we have knowledge but we have no way to apply it and that's why a lot of people say certain grades are a waste of time because you get the wisdom but there's no way, way to apply it and sometimes in university you get all this wisdom and all this knowledge. You, you, um, you, you get relayed all this information, but you don't have understanding or you don't have a way to apply it. Or sometimes if the information is relayed and understood, you still don't have a way to apply it. So, so you come out of university as unlearned as you went in. Like you come out of university not knowing anything because you just did it to pass the test. And the Lord is calling for true wisdom. True wisdom happens in all facets. And not everybody's strong in every type of wisdom. Some people are stronger in financial, some people are stronger in artistic, some people are stronger, stronger in spiritual wisdom. But everyone has a measure of wisdom that they are strong in. So you are not stupid. You are not dumb. You are not a dunce. You are not a good for nothing. It's just that you don't have that measure of wisdom. But the good news is, if you need it, it's easy to fix. There are so many books with so many different kinds of wisdom out there. It's easy to get, but sometimes it's not as easy to understand and it played to you, but sometimes it's not as easy to understand apply. And so understanding and application are key parts to listen to. Um, and then, okay, so we move on to intuition now. Intuition is God's voice in in it in 
intuition is actually God's voice inside of every person. They would say that it is that still small voice inside of you. Um, in, I think it was Joshua, not Joshua, Elijah. We, we hear about the story of the still small voice of God. That is actually your intuition because when your spirit connects with God's spirit, when you get saved and your spirit connects with God's spirit saying yes to Christ, he gives you his voice inside of you all the time. So that I, that I call your intuition. Or sometimes it's called um, your, your spirit. And sometimes people call it the Holy Spirit is speaking to, to me. When, when people say the, the Lord is speaking to me, it very rarely happens where it's out loud. Sometimes it does. People have claimed it does. I've heard it a few times, but not a lot. Usually, it means a st your intuition is speaking to you, or you you can sense something down inside of you that says, "Go here, go here," or "Don't go there." That's when people say God spoke to me, it doesn't mean he came in and spoke. It means his voice, his still small voice inside of you gave instruction, gave direction, gave understanding to a situation, gave insight to a situation. That's what people mean when they say God spoke to me. Like that's what I mean when I say God spoke to me. He gave understanding, he gave illumination, he gave all of that stuff. So, and people say, how do I know I hear God? Um, my response is, like any relationship, the relationship between God and man takes time to build. And how you know you hear God is it takes time. It doesn't happen right away. And I would say, take the pressure off yourself. You're like, oh, I want to hear God. I need direction. I need this. I need that. Um, find your rhythm with God. And the only way you'll find your rhythm with God is to spend time with God. The only way you'll get to hear God is to spend time with God. That's how you'll know that it's God. Because I can't give you um, a definite answer to know that it's God. Because it's different for every person. Because he speaks to every person differently. And the, it, the intuition that he would give you is or the way he would speak to you is not the way he would speak to me so i can't give you tips on that i don't think anyone can they can give you their ideas and their experiences but not a hardcore tips this is how you do this this is how you do that no <laughs> They could give you, uh, um, only you can figure out how God speaks to you or how you know God speaks to you. And it comes through time and experience. When you hear a person speak, when you hear a person preach, when you hear a wonderful servant, you are hearing the word of God and you're hearing what God said to the person, but you are also 
hearing their experiences and their their experiences and their knowledge of how God works. So God may be revealing something totally different to you or adding on uh, to what that person said in regards to your life. So that is why it's important for you to find your rhythm with God, to find your beat with God and how he jibes with you. Next is love. Now, when we talk about love, we talk about all these kinds of love. We talk about the Hebrew words for love. Let me talk about romantic love. We talk about brotherly love. We talk about love for each other. And I think what the Lord is saying today is we need to to love uh, vor voraciously. We need to attack love. Like, um, we need to love voraciously. We need to love wholeheartedly without fear. But we need to love with wisdom as well. Uh, we need to love all people, but we need to have wisdom in who we take into our lives. See, we can love people without bringing everybody, without bringing everybody super close. And I think a lot of people think love is weak, but love is so strong. Love is fierce. And the Lord is asking for um, his church to love fiercely, like, I'm, I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go no matter what you do. And I think to have that, that's the kind of love that Christ has for us. And love doesn't always mean agreement. Love means whether I agree with you or disagree with you, understand you or whatever, I embrace you. I accept you. That's what love really is. We, we often think love means agreement. It doesn't all the time. It can, but it doesn't have to. So when he said God so loved the world, it didn't mean that he, like, agreed with everyone and just loved everyone and just, ex just said okay to whatever they did. No, that's not love. Love is a fierce kind of embrace. No matter who you are, no matter where you stand, no matter what religion you are, no matter what um, culture you are, no matter what political persuasion you're from, I embrace you. And that's what love really means. To embrace and to protect and be fierce when it comes to love. When I mean be fierce, I mean, I, I mean hold the ones that you are close to with everything you've got. Don't let them go. There's a mother listening to me right now. Don't stop praying for your child. Don't stop praying for your sister. Don't stop praying for your brother. When the heat turns up, turn up your prayers. When the when the heat turns up, turn up your worship. When the heat turns up, turn up turn up your Bible reading. Because when you do that, it it 
says to the devil, I'm not letting you go. God never let go of us. And sometimes we have to understand that that love is not easy. Love is not a Hallmark movie. Love is tough. Love is being in the trenches with someone. Love is love is just you're in the trenches with someone, you're down and dirty with someone, you're in it with someone. That is real love. When you can be in it, in something with someone, and come out the other side and rejoice with them, and your friendships be stronger, that's real love. It's not all, it's not about like a Hallmark movie, oh, we have a little problem, and then the movie's over. Real love is tough. Real love is hard. Real love takes grit. But if you can get on the other side of that love, you'll see so much from yourself and that person. And there's nothing like the bond of love between two people that have been through hell together. Um, some pe some pe people that say, that say they like to read uh, say they like to read books about women. Some people like to read books about uh, sci-fi and scary books. I like to read books about couples. I like to read books about strong couples that go through hell together and still come out, come out, uh, come out the other side. It makes a relationship stronger. It makes a friendship stronger. It makes a sibling relationship stronger. There is nothing like a friendship after it's been through, through the fire. Friendships are, and relationships are forged in fire. So don't tell me you love someone unless you've gone through the fire with them. It is just amazing how when you've gone through the fire with some people, you see what they're made of. Fire can either burn you to ash or it can forge you. Or it can or it can firm you up. It can glue you together. So don't tell me you have a strong strong marriage or relationship and you've never been through the fire together. And that's the kind of love we need to have for people. The kind of love where we are willing to get down and dirty with people. We are willing to go in the fire with people. We are willing to sacrifice for people. And sometimes love, though, takes wisdom as well. In some relationships, God will tell you, you need to love that person, but you need to love them from afar. And that's what he's saying to some people today. Some people are um, letting a person them, letting a, letting a person misuse them, saying that, Oh, he loves me, or she loves me, or whatever, or take advantage of love for them. Look at First Corinthians 13. It does not say anything about about uh, letting someone take advantage of you. It says it keeps no record of that. It keeps no record of wrong, but it doesn't let it happen. And sometimes. The best way to love somebody is to let them go. That's for somebody, I don't know who it is, but you've been fighting in this relationship alone and the Lord's been telling you to let it go, to let it go. Because sometimes the best way to fight for somebody is to let them, is from afar. 
And sometimes you just have to let people uh, live their life and keep praying, keep, keep, keep fighting for them, but fight from afar. You don't deserve to be taken advantage of. You don't deserve to be abused. You don't deserve to be misused and call that, oh, he loves me, or oh, she loves me. You deserve to be cherished. You deserve to be valued for who you are and who God has made you to be. And somebody needs to hear this. That that toxic relationship is stifling God's purpose in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to let it go. To let it go. They'll be alright. They'll be alright because you know who loves them more than you. God does. And he knows what he's taking them through. And by you stopping their fire, it it could be stopping the purpose in in their life because fire forges purpose in someone's life and by you rescuing them all the time it could could be hindering god's purpose in their life it may feel good in the moment but it, but it may be hindering them in the long run so don't don't let your momentary satisfaction in helping them um, hinder their long-term purpose. And, and my last point is determination. My gosh, I wish we would have determination again. Um, that never give up attitude. I talked about this a bit when I talked about love. But that never give up attitude. That attitude that I'm going to be relentless until I get to God's goal for my life. My, my definition of determination is having relent, relentless, a, a relentless pursuit of God's purpose. That's my definition of determin determination. A relentless pursuit of God's purpose. And if it is not the thing, it will lead to the thing. So, find God's purpose and pursue it relentlessly. And what I would say for anybody um, in university not knowing what to do, and wondering, how do I find God's purpose? How do I know? The, the only thing I can say is you don't know. What I would do if I could go back is try a bunch of different things. And then when you find that, that thing that really sets you ablaze, that thing that makes you get up in the morning, that's when you know you're living in God's purpose. A lot of people say, like, you need to find a job or whatever, but I think where purpose greets you, money meets you. When you're in purpose, all your needs are provided for. And it it is not easy. It is not going to be a, a cakewalk. It is going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But it's going to be building something in you. That's what God wants to do ultimately in a person's life, is build something in them. And that's what he's trying to let you, let you go through all this, because he's building something from you. It, it's tough, it takes grit, it takes determination, it takes that relentless pursuit that I was, that I was talking about, that never give up attitude. But in the end you'll see 
what you were working for, and you may not see it for years. You may not even see it at this on this side, but it may be for your generations. So be determined. Pursue that purpose relentlessly, and and don't be afraid to fail at all. Because failure is a stepping stone for success and purpose. Failure is a stepping stone for success and purpose. And if you don't fail, how will you know? You'll fail several times. You'll fail several times. But the important thing from failure, there are two important things. is the lessons you learn and your ability to get up and try again. And never stop trying until you get to God's purpose for your life. Be determined. Set your face like flint and go for it. Throw your whole self at, at it, as T.D. Jake said in an interview a few years ago. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys. No matter what's going on, you'll make it all right. But you gotta stay strong. No matter what's going on, you'll make it all Wild women do what they do, what they don't regret it. Wild women show what they're going through. Wild women do what you think they'll never learn. What you only dream about, wild women do. Well, women do, and they don't regret it. Well, women show what they're going through. Well, women do what you think they'll never learn. What you only dream about, wow, women do. Wow, that's that's a song from Pretty Women. I love that song. It's pretty great. It has a, a late '80s, early '90s vibe. It is awesome. It is so good. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye.